So, wow, you guys are awesome. I mean, this is so, uh, of course, we get nervous when we come up here, but to have all of you here cheering us on, I mean, there's just nothing better than this. So my name is Tammy, and um, I, a few years ago, like Kelsey said, was in corporate America for almost 20 years. I had a great job. I was in sales. I worked for a Fortune 500 company. And a few years ago, I just felt this stirring that something was needed, something needed to change in me. So while on the outside, it looked like I had reached my potential and done what I was supposed to be doing, inside there was this torment of you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. You're not who you're supposed to be. And so that was a really um, difficult time. We were not in a position for me to make changes, for me to leave my job at any point in that time. So what do you do when that happens? When you feel this conflict, I'm sure there are many of you sitting out here who feel this. And so the one thing that I knew was that I had a choice. So there was one decision that I could make. And it could be I could start being miserable and complaining all the time. I hate this job. I want to do something different. Or I could choose to be awesome where I was. And that's what I chose. And I have never regretted that decision because it allowed me to still be really great at my job and do what I was really being paid for. And a lot of what Mike Loomis said, I really agree with all of that. Being, you know, you can learn so many things from the job that you're in before you launch out into something else. So for me, that meant a lot of experimenting. I started writing a blog. I started a podcast called Right Where You Are, coincidentally and um, really started to, um, to take a look at like what were the things that were right in front of me? Who was I? Like many of the people that have talked this weekend, that requires us to take a look at ourselves. Who was I and what am I about and how was I created? What, was, what were the gifts that I had? And so the thing that really stuck out to me was that I was a connector. I'm a connector. I love to connect people to each other. I love to connect people to um, other people in communities. I love to help people take steps forward. I love to help coach them through that. Um, people have always come to me to do that. And so I thought, well, what in the world do you do with that? How can I ever do anything with that? Um, and about that same time, uh, my pastor came to me and said, you know, you're kind of passionate about some of the things that we need to do in our community. And so my instant answer was like, no way. Never going to happen. I think those words came out of my mouth. Never going to happen. So don't say that. Um, because that was not anything I aspired to. Who wants to work for a church? I mean, some people do, maybe, but uh, not me. I was like, that was not my dream to work for a church. So I really was conflicted about that because I didn't feel like that was where it was supposed to go. But sometimes God has other plans and will continue to work in your heart until you start to see that maybe there is a connection there. Maybe how you have been created could be used in a way that you would have never expected. And so that's what I did. I left my full-time, really good job to go on staff at my church, which was not a pay increase, just to let you all know that. See, I'm saying y'all now. I've been in Nashville too long. We don't say that in Chicago. Um, so, so anyway, it's been a great, it's been a really interesting year of transition. So that's what I want to talk to you about today because I want to get really honest with you. There have been some hard moments in this year of transition. And so, but before I get into more of that, I want you guys to do something for me first. I want you to close your eyes right where you are. Imagine that. And I want you to think about um, your dream, your launch, either what you're wanting to launch, um, you know, what you're dreaming about launching. And if you don't have that, that's okay. Just think about who you want to be. Who do you want to be or what do you want to launch? Think about the time that you are actually launched. You've done it. You've taken the You have um, launched out in whatever way that looks like for you. Think about what does that feel like? What does it feel like in your body? What, what do you, where are you? What are the feelings that you're experiencing? Um, and just sit with that for a second. I know sometimes it's hard for us to imagine this, so if this doesn't work for you, maybe think about it later. But just sit with that, with your launch, you've launched, and what it feels like. 
Okay, now open your eyes. I'd love to hear afterwards what that felt like for some of you if that worked. But um, so now I want to talk about kind of that first year of transition. But first of all, what I want to do is I want to celebrate with you. If you launched, you need to celebrate because that's a big deal. Do you know how many people never launch? They never do their, they never chase after their dreams. They never do that thing that's been in the back of their mind for so long. So if you launched, you need to celebrate. You need to be proud of what you've done. You're not gonna say, oh, that was no big deal. Oh, shucks, don't tell me that. You're gonna celebrate when you launch. And if you do launch, we wanna celebrate with you. That's the cool thing about this community. We wanna celebrate each other. And so if you've done that, then congratulations. I wanna tell you that that's a big deal to do that. So now we'll talk a little bit about the first year. So obviously I understand it looks different for everyone. All of our dreams are different, all of our launches are different, but I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of my experiences because I think there are some common things that happen when we do launch. Um, so the first one I wanna talk about is emotions. So I will tell you, I am not an overly emotional person. I am pretty low key, pretty even keeled most of the time. So when I launched, all of a sudden, all these emotions showed up. And it's not, I don't feel like I suppress my own emotions, but I just don't have the roller coaster. But sometimes our dreams do look like a roller coaster. They look like that. And after we've launched, it's scary because we are feeling these emotions that maybe we haven't helped to feel before. So obviously the first one that you're gonna feel is excitement. I mean, that's a natural. We, if you've launched, you're, you should be excited. I would hope that if you've worked all this way and you've launched, you should be excited. So that one wasn't as big of a deal. Um, the other ones were, you know, happiness is good too. Um, fear showed up, you know, all of us, if you've followed John Anka, if we talk about fear a lot, that one didn't really surprise me either. The one that surprised me was grief because I left a really good job. Anyone would say, like, people would want to have had my job. And I left really well, but I still was grieving the loss of that job because I went to something else. And I didn't recognize it. I had to have a friend say, it sounds like you're maybe grieving the, the loss of your job and you haven't really walked through that. So that one really surprised me. And then the other one that surprised me was panic because I am not a panicky person. And so all of a sudden when you launch and you go, you have one of those days where you feel like you have no idea what you're doing, and then you go, oh my gosh, what did I do? I left my job and I can't go back now and I, I told all these people I'm gonna do this and now what do I do? So that is gonna be something that you're gonna experience. There's a, and for some of you it may be different emotions, but those are things that will come up. Um, I think that also during that time you feel really out of rhythm because you have been, like for me, I had been in sales for my whole career. I knew, like I knew the corporate world. That was all, I had that all down. To launch and do something completely different in a small team environment who are really creative, um, that was unsure for me. That was something that I had never done before. And so I felt really out of rhythm in that. I felt really vulnerable and I thought like, oh my gosh, do I really have what it takes? I have no idea what I got myself into and now what do I do? So that was a, a really tough time. And the thing that I wanna tell you is that the launch, your launch and the emotional roller coaster that comes with it, it's a season. It's a beginning and it's a season that is going to pass. But you have to be willing to recognize it and walk through that when it's happening. Um, so I, I really would encourage you to sit in those emotions because I think what we all tend to do is we try to bury them down. We try to say like, oh, everything's great when people ask you about it. And really we need to be able to walk through those. And that's been something that I've been learning. Um, I think also what happens is that our habits change. When we change and do something new, it doesn't look like what we did before. And so for me, it looked like I had been in a rhythm of um, being really good at my job, I was traveling a lot, but in the margins, I was writing and doing my podcast and doing all this kind of, these kind of things in the margins, and then all of a sudden I didn't have that big chunk. I just had one thing that I was doing, and it kind of threw me off balance for a little bit. And um, 
I think that when that happens, part of it is, like for me, it was that my I could just sense that my body needed to rest. I had been hustling for so long and so hard in the margins that my body was telling me, you need to slow down um, because it's just, it's just not sustainable to keep going at that pace. So for me, that was really hard. I was always a very productive, run by the numbers, go, go, go kind of person. And so learning to rest and be okay with the change and the things that I was doing was really important. I think something else that, that changes that we're not always uh, prepared for are our relationships. And when we are in a job, maybe for a long time, and we have coworkers, and we go out to lunch, and we pop by their cube, and we have conversations all day, we just assume that we're gonna be able to keep those relationships up with those people, and that doesn't happen usually. Sometimes it's proximity that draws you together, and that can be a difficult thing to walk through. I think sometimes our relationships with our friends change. Um, some friends don't understand. Especially, I mean, we know in this group, we all have friends, I'm sure, who say, what in the world are you doing? You're meeting all these strangers on the internet, and now you're going and doing something crazy. So there's going to be your friends who don't understand. And then I think also, you know, sometimes it can cause changes with your spouse, with your significant other. Th these are big life transition changes. And so I think you need to be able to recognize that that might be something that would happen for you. So I think it's really important um, that you learn to be present in that and that you really just be aware of what that looks like. What's different in your life? And how can you just walk through that with grace and, and really be... Um, kind to yourself during that process because it is going to be a little emotional. I think something else that happens is that we have to learn that um, life in transition is just, it can really look like an alternate universe sometimes. It is, you're like, who am I and what am I doing? Because this is all so new to me. For example, it might be that you, know, you worked in an environment where you were always given direction of what to do. You followed the rules, you, did the, you executed the plans that you were given, and that's what you knew. And now all of a sudden, you launch out on your own, maybe you have your own business, and guess who has to set the strategy for that business? And guess who has to take care of the business side of that? And guess who has to do all those things that someone else did in a different environment? And that's hard. That can be a really different change for you. Um, you may find out that um, you know, maybe what has worked for you and how you worked in the past doesn't really work very well in this new transition. So that's something that I would say you need to be aware, aware of. And I think one important thing that I was learning was you really have to relearn how to be awesome now. Because you may have known how to be awesome in your job before and in your life, and now this looks totally different. And so you need to relearn that. You need to reimagine what that looks like. And I think a lot of it, too, can, can be a part of kind of deprogramming yourself. You know, I came from a corporate background of anybody who's working in corporate knows what I'm talking about. Rules, all kind of, you know, just structure, everything is great. Now I'm in a team with really creative people who don't like structure and who just challenged me to work a lot differently. I had never really worked closely in teams like that before. You know, I was kind of on my own. I was responsible for my own sales quota and I was the one who was in charge. So learning to work together as a team like that has been a big challenge for me. And it's been a really good area of growth though because we're learning as a team where our strengths are and, and what we bring to each other. So I think that's something uh, that's really important. I would say it's really, it's really important not to rush this process. Like the first year is going to be difficult. There's going to be lots of great moments. There's going to be lots of difficult moments. And so it's important to not try to rush through all of that and expect yourself to just have it all together because it's just not going to happen in the first year. Um, I think that one thing that ends up happening sometimes too is that people stop dreaming at this point. Um, someone else talked about it earlier. You launch and then you just think that that's it, and you stop dreaming and thinking about what more or what else could I be doing, and I think that's really important. That's something I'm going through the process of right now is like, okay, what's the next thing for me? Because this is, I'm still where I am, and I'm staying, I'm not going anywhere, but what does the rest of the things that I've been doing look like? And I think something else that's really important is that you need support in this process. I can't emphasize this enough. 
I mean, this group, look around, there's so much support in here, but I also think you need support in your real life too. I think that you need people around you that are with you and that can support you. People who've launched themselves and who can say, I get it, like, are you really okay? Can we talk, let's be honest and talk about where you're at. How are you feeling? What are you doing? People who will give you grace and who will give you the space that you need to really work through those things that you're doing. I think it's really important. It's gonna require a lot of honest conversations with yourself and with other people too. And that can be hard, I know that, but I think that trying to launch on your own is just something that's not gonna benefit you. I think someone else said it earlier, it's, gonna, it's a great way to just burn out pretty quickly if you try to do it all on your own. So the last point I wanna talk about is um, some lessons and transition and then talk about you. So this is the hard part, and a couple of people before me, it's kind of interesting to always see the themes of how we relate to each other, but I think that working on yourself in the time of transition is so important, especially if you haven't done it before, because there are incredible lessons in transition. If you want to find out who you really are, launch out and do something completely new, and you'll find out who you are, if you're willing to do the work. That's the key. You have to be willing to do the work. I think um, there are so many things that you can look at to say, okay, really, where am I strong? Where do I need to improve? What are some areas that I can really work on, on me? Um, and where am I not willing to hide anymore? Who, what am I hiding from, from myself? And that's a hard question to ask yourself. And I'm, I'm, I'm talking to myself here because this is what a process that I've been in of really ta finally taking the time in my life to say, okay, let's look at some of these hard questions that I was always too busy to worry about, or I could just hide behind my corporate job that nobody was really asking me these deep questions. Now I work in a church with a really creative staff who's like goes really deep into this stuff. So now I'm learning like this is stuff that we need to uh, talk about. So I think there's a couple things you can do in this. I think the important thing um, is that you really have to take care of yourself in this process. It's so important to take care of yourself physically, emotionally, spiritually, um, because we only have us. Um, Amy had it, or someone had it in their breakout of, you know, we have one plate, it's us. Like we have one person to take care of. And we can't be who we're created to be if we're not taking care of ourselves. And I think that's something that we're all guilty of at some point or another, and so we have to ask ourselves those tough questions. Um, I think internal work is so important. This is something I've been walking through that has really rocked my world of just trying to figure out who I am. Who is Tammy? I knew who corporate Tammy was that most people saw, but who is the real me? This, is, this was my opportunity to launch out into something totally different and to expand my comfort zone and for me to really get to know me. And it's been a really fun and crazy process in, the, in doing it. I think another thing is really important to keep moving because not so much to just rush through this process, but to keep going. Because there's gonna be some points in the first year where you're gonna say, I think I made a mistake, and I don't think this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And that's again where the support comes in hand and where you need to continue to keep moving towards the, the goal that's so important to you. Um, I think, like I said, the internal work is really important. Things like therapy are great, coaching, um, you know, just even getting still and listening. I think one thing that happens, I know with me was, I was so busy all the time, and I didn't take a lot of time to really focus and be still. And now that I have more time, I'm really learning that that's so important for us to really be able to walk through that. And so why is this so important? Why is navigating this first year important? I think it's important because you have worked your tail off to get to the place of launching. And now is the time that you can become fully you. And so I want you to just pull up that image, whatever that image was again, of you launching and what that felt like. And now I want you to connect it with your why. Because your why is why we're all here. It's why we're all wanting to change our life. And that's something you have to remember and connect those two images together. And then we want to celebrate with you. So when you launch, we wanna be there and we wanna cheer you on and we wanna say, we wanna help you get through that next year. Thank you.